Hello everybody, Linda AK The Gamer Girl here and today we're going to talk about another online convention that I went to. I went to Roll20Con 2021. So everybody, just like the last, I think four now? I've been to so many online conventions I can't even keep track now. <laughs> well it's what? Like I've been to anime conventions and other stuff that didn't have to do with gaming. And for me, it was another good experience. Um, the past three, I've been to GaryCon and I've been to Game Hole Con, and this one is the third one. So this one was not used on Discord, but it was actually used on a separate website. And I saw it on Twitter, and when it was announced, I was excited. So I literally just looked online and saw the website, went to the website, and then just started booking whatever I could find. And I've never used um, an actual website other than, I believe, just Roll20Con. I just used just Roll20 or Discord or <laughs> looked online for like D&D Beyond to see if I could find anything to play. So when I had this available, I was shocked that this is not used more on other websites and other places. I would recommend this for any other convention that's an online tabletop convention where you literally have a website. And the one thing I like about it is there's reviews. So you can see the reviews of several of the, the GMs slash DM. And you can see other people's experiences. And I like that because when you're booking stuff on Discord or Roll20 or other places, there's not a review system. So you don't know what the person's going to be like when you get to meet them. So for this one, I was grateful because I could look at reviews and some of them only had a couple of reviews, but even then it was, oh, this person was great at this or that. And, and I could take the time to do what I needed to do. So I did that. So the very first game I played was a Call of Cthulhu game. It wasn't pulp. It was regular Cthulhu, but it was set in the old West, like the old West, uh, tiny kind of like, uh, guns shooting, blazing, all that stuff. And so the first GM was named Edward, and Edward put us through a simulation of we were either lawyers or a deputy, and we had to go and investigate this person who's done a lot of crimes, and we have to put them in jail or let them go. So we go to the town, we find out a lot of fishy stuff's going on, we find out that maybe the person didn't do a lot of the stuff that they were saying, that they just kind of threw it on and all, made them a, the guy a scapegoat, so... We started investigating. I was the apprentice lawyer. Um, I had <laughs> another person who was playing the lawyer and another person who was playing the deputy and we had to find out that the people were being sketchy and they didn't want us to investigate but they wanted us to just, you know, try the person who was going after the all the bad stuff and come to find out that the mayor was involved, one of the ranchers who owns most of the land was involved, one of the people that was running for sheriff, I believe. He was not involved, but he was kind of sketchy. We didn't know if we were going to have to put him down <laughs> in a weird way, like take him out and just like do that. So come to find out that there was some tomes and weird, creepy doll figures that were inhabiting a spirit and they were taking over and possessing people's bodies and there were shadows and stuff. And it was really super cool. I liked it. I enjoyed from beginning to end <laughs> the whole experience. So Edward, if you're watching this, you were really good. I enjoyed the scenario, the whole thing. If you were one of the players who played in the Call of Cthulhu, I think it was Demi Rhea, I believe the scenario was called. Thank you. You you were both great. I enjoyed the <laughs> whole scenario. I enjoyed having fun and making choices and figuring out if we were going to... And we almost died a couple times. We, uh, we had a, a cave, a mine that we had to go to, and there was a sticky situation that we put ourselves in that we could have died from. So we made it out, and we, and we, we were just like, I'm tailing, I'm just bailing, I'm out, I'm done. So I truly appreciate all of you for making a fun game. I had a great time with that one. Next scenario was uh, one made by Paul. Uh, Paul is a guy who I've played with before. Um, he's a great GM, if you ever get to- his name is Paul the Glitter Man, I believe that's what his username is, but Paul is, uh, been writing modules, as do many GMs, and 
DMs do, but a lot of his modules were fun. I liked them. I liked his style. Um, Paul, if you're watching, you're comical in a good way. And I like that you are really quick with it. Like, if I throw chaos at you, you will not care. You will go with it. So, to the group that we had, we were in a train heist. And basically, the train heist was we had to get a specific thing for a boss that hired us and we pretty much were just a band of people who we shouldn't be together but we got together because we were all just needing a job so we got on the train and we're trying to get through and again i don't know why i like to throw chaos but i did dry humor because for those who don't know some people including my grandpa who was in the military dry humor was abundant <laughs> readily available for anybody who doesn't know Dry humor is the way to go with me. So, <laughs> dry humor all the way. I ate a mushroom. Yes, I ate a mushroom. I got high. I got, I grew 10 feet tall, almost. <laughs> and we had fun with it. We unionized the, the railroad. For all the group of people that played with me, you are all amazing. That was so much fun. I had a blast seeing the <laughs> just the scenario play out of one group member deciding to get the biggest bomb that would take out all the lights and just go chaotic. And then the other group members deciding, let's unionize the train. <laughs> and I've done this with a couple of other groups where we threw the GM DM a loop and the GM DM was like, no, we got to stick with the plan. We got to stick with this. I made it this way. I don't know what to do. And it's like, there's only a couple GM DMs that have, one of them is Paul, and the other one was um, uh, the Dareluck Club. For those who don't know, uh, that was the other scenario where I played where we kind of made the, the, the Game Master slash Dungeon Master think on their feet. And when we do that, then they go, oh wow, I would have never thought that you guys and gals and non-binary people would do that. I didn't think you would do that. <laughs> so I'm just like, chaos. Have fun. It's a one-time thing. We are only here for three, four hours. Have a good time. Have a blast. Have whatever you're gonna do. Have fun. So I'm just sitting there back in the background laughing at some of the stuff that's happening because why not? <laughs> and so played with that character that I've played with before and I'm actually liking Dragonborns. I usually am either an elf or... um. What's the other one? A drow, sometimes. But I was a dragonborn for two characters, and I liked it. I enjoyed it, so I might be a dragonborn from now on. And thank you to all the group who were playing with Paul and myself. Had a blast. It was a fun time. And the last game was a uh, kind of a meshup of... There was the Shining... It was also kind of like the thing meets clue. Um, for this one, the, the GM slash DM was Chad. And it was basically taking the system of Dungeons and Dragons and making it horror based, which I always love. I love when somebody makes it horror based for me because I love horror. I play mostly stuff that revolves around horror in any way, shape or form. Nine times out of ten. You get me with a horror story, I will sign up for it. I don't even care if it's a system I know. I will try it for the first time. And so this one was making me think, wow, this is going to be really interesting how it plays out. Because what it is, you get a character. And the character has a secret. And you don't know what the secret is. And throughout the whole time, we were whispering to the, the DM. The DM would tell us, okay, if you want to do something whisper it to me and so you would whisper it to them and then or you whisper to another character say you were working in cahoots with another character we didn't know who knew whom we didn't know when we grew up the group together and we were all starting we we just got a list of what we can say and what we can't say and so when you got the what we can say you just said your name what you were doing there why you were there and so my character was a spell sword i believe that was what it what my character is called um and basically i was taking care of 
somebody else who was of royalty and just basically escorting them, but I had a secret. So what was so good about it was there was some people there who were out to just kill people. And then there was some there that were there to sign other people into some kind of contract to get out of a contract that they didn't want to get into. And some people were just monsters who were trying to <laughs> get a minion going or make some creature that was hidden become alive again or a vampire or something like that to where they were trying to make something happen. And so it looked like the scenario could play up to like eight people, which was really cool because there was a couple of people that couldn't be there. So it just didn't work out like that. But I had a blast. I, I enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun. And so, Chad, thank you for running an awesome system that I would have never thought of. And we need to do more Clue in Dungeons and Dragons. That was a blast. I had a fun time where I was trying to get my scenario to work and try to get other people and find out who was doing something. And it was the butler in the library with the candlestick. It literally was that. Like, we, we end up seeing people, some people, somebody was dead on the ground or there was somebody else hurt injured and you didn't know what happened you're like what and the person's just screaming like ah and you're like oh no what just happened and so that was a blast and you didn't know if you were if you were seeing ghosts or if it wasn't there or if it was just what what was going on so i really enjoyed it thank you to the group of people who played with me i enjoyed the whispers back and forth and trying to figure out who was what and then at the end, we all said what we were and what our secret was. And it was really fun to see that some people were literally just scamming somebody else. And they didn't have anything else that they were doing other than just get some quick money and bail. <laughs> so it was fun. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed that some people were monsters. Some people were just there just to make a quick buck. Some people were there for a mission for another side mission. And some people were there to raise a monstrous army and vampires and all that stuff. So it could have been a small secret to a big secret. I enjoyed it. I had a fun time. So that was my Roll20 Con convention experience. Uh, if you did go to Roll20 Con 2021, how was it? Did you enjoy it? Did you like it? And if you didn't like it, what didn't you like about it? I know I had a blast. I played all three days. I watched a little bit of um, the the convention. I wish though my only gripe was uh, Roll20, if you're watching this, can you make the videos available to watch after they're done? Because I would be playing a game and I would jump back in and not saying that I didn't like the, the contest and the stuff that was going on, but I knew that at a certain time there was a game going on and I couldn't watch it actually when the convention was going on. Um, Gary Khan and uh, Gamehole Khan and a couple other conventions, they all let you watch the videos right after it was played. Immediately available for everybody. I understand, you know, you, you want to keep it to, you know, not busy and everything like that and you want people to watch live what's going on at that time, but if I'm losing interest, I'm not going to watch it and I'm just going to leave. I'm just going to call it a day for the convention. So maybe that's just a suggestion. Um, try, you know, leaving the available video VODs for us to watch right after. And if there's a technical issue, I understand. But it seemed like every single video was not available at all to watch. And I know Friday had a couple games going. So it was kind of sad. So I know after the convention, I usually don't watch stuff. So... Keep it hyped. Keep it going. That's my only gripe. And that was the end. So I hope you all have a great rest of your day. Keep on gaming and stay safe out there. Have fun. What did you play? Is it something scary? <laughs> Bye, everybody. Linda the Gamer Girl She's here, she's playing games Linda the Gamer Girl She's here, she's playing games too